So, let me ask you a question. Are you ready? Great. Heat Trace video number two starts now. Hello again, this is Deshaun from the Dell Prentice Company. And this is video number two in our Heat Trace series. In video number one, we talked about Heat Trace, what it is, how does it work, and the different types of Heat Trace. If you haven't seen that video, it behooves you to go back and watch it. It might catch you up on this video. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about both the advantages and disadvantages of constant wattage heat trace and also self-regulating heat trace. But before we continue on, I think we need to give constant wattage heat trace a name. Well, actually, it already has a name. It's called mineral insulated cable. Mineral insulated cable just rolls off your tongue, right? Yeah, I don't think so either. And if you think I'm gonna talk about mineral insulated cable the entire video, you're greatly mistaken. So in the industry, what we did is we condensed down the name mineral insulated cable. And it's called MI cable. Now before we talk about the advantages of MI cable, what we need to do first is break down the cable. This is an example of MI cable. So as you can see, you have two different types of MI cable. You have a single conductor, and then you also have a dual conductor. Now the single conductor is rated up to 600 volts, and it has a maximum output of 61 watts per foot. The second cable, you have two different types of cable. For the 300 volt, you have 32 watts per foot maximum output. For the 600 volt, you have a 62 watts per foot output. Now, both of the cables are pretty much made up the same way. You'll have either one or two conductors, and on the outside of that would be your insulation. It's a magnesium oxide insulation, and magnesium oxide is very hydrophilic. That means that it loves water, so moisture can be very detrimental to the heat trace cable. So what we must do is protect it on the outside with a metal alloy sheet. And it serves another purpose as well. It also serves as the ground conductor. Now, let's look at the advantages of MI cable. Now, for MI cable advantages, the outer jacket or that metal alloy is very, very durable. Its rugged design withstands twisting and also flattening of, of the cable. And it's resistant to corrosive fluids. It's also can be located in explosion proof areas. It's rated at class one div one. You can place MI cable on either pipes and or vessels. And when we refer to vessels, we're referring to actual tanks. And as I said before, it has a heating output of up to 62 watts per foot. Now let's get into some of the electrical advantages. For one, it's rated up to 600 volts. That means you can use three phase power on this product. Because you can use three phase power and up to 480 volts in the United States, that's what we usually use, you can have longer heat trace runs and that reduces the total number of heat trace circuits in the system. And of course, as always, the customer is happy because that's the actual cost savings in the long run. But one of its best features is its temperature rating. MI cable can be exposed to a maximum of 1200 degrees Fahrenheit and have a continuous operating temperature of over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. That makes it good for use on steam lines, also asphalt lines, and high temperature process lines. Now, let's talk about the disadvantages of MI cable. The first disadvantage of MI cable would be the fact that you can't touch or cross it to itself. If you touch or cross it to itself, it will continue to heat in that same area until it burns itself out. Next, you can't alter it in the field. Remember, MI cable is very humidity or moisture sensitive. Next, MI cable was created in a climate controlled environment. So that means that when you order it, 
there's going to be a lead time associated with it. Typical lead times are three to four weeks for MI cable. So that means that you can't get it off of the shelf from a local supplier. MI cable has to be designed and also ordered. And of course, it's a lead time associated with it. Now, let's take a look at the makeup of self-regulating heat trace. This is an example of self-regulating heat trace cable. You have your two bus wires. Next is your conductive core. And on top of that, it has an insulating jacket. The next item, it serves two purposes. First, you have an extra added protection protecting your conductive core and your bus wires. But you also have this for your actual ground itself. This is your ground braid. Over top of that, you have your overall jacketing. Now the overall jacketing and self-regulating heat trace comes in two different types. One is polyethylene, which is your CR type jacketing. And the second is a fluoropolymer, which is your CT jacketing. Now the difference is, what the way I like to explain it to customers is, your CR jacketing would be for water locations. So if your heat trace is going to be subject to water, then you would use that. If your heat trace is um, subject to any type of corrosive materials like chemicals, you would use the CT. And those are the two different jacketings. Now let's look at the advantages of self-regulating heat trace. Now the first advantage of self-regulating heat trace by far is the fact that you can cut it to length out in the field. An installer can get a spool of heat trace and as long as they don't exceed the maximum labeled output of that circuit, they can install it, energize it, and it's working. Next, they can also tee or splice or repair the heat trace cable right out in the field. You don't have to wait. A lot of those parts are right on the shelf. The next advantage is the fact that it could be used on plastic and or it could be used on fiberglass. Now, generally, I'll get into the types of cable in the next slide. However, this would be for your XL trace for the commercial version and then your BTV in your industrial version. The next advantage is the fact that it won't overheat by touching or crossing. Remember, for self-regulating cable, if you touch or cross it, it will continue to heat in that same area. However, it will eventually regulate itself back down. And because it regulates up and down, you can have an energy savings. Finally, I'm going to put an asterisk by this, but heat trace or self-regulating heat trace doesn't require a thermostat. Now, I'm going to answer that question in another video a little later on when we talk about controls. However, I'll put an asterisk there and then we'll come back to that and I'll uh, mention it further. Here at the Dell Prentice Company, we handle both commercial and also industrial heat trace. For our commercial version, it's called XL Trace. Basically, it has a maximum exposure temperature of 150 degrees and also a maximum maintain temperature of 150 degrees Fahrenheit. At 50 degrees, we have cables of 5 watt, 8 watt, and also 12 watts per foot. For our industrial cable, we have different types of cable. The basic freeze protection cable and very minimal uh, temperature process lines you look in at the BTV cable. Now all of these are rated at class 1 division 2 and that's standard but you can also get this in explosion proof which is class 1 division 1. Now for your BTV the maximum maintained temperature is 150 degrees Fahrenheit and the maximum exposure temperature is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, it comes in 3 watt, 5 watt, 8 watt, and also 10 watts per foot. The next step up is your QTVR. QTVR ranges from 225 
for maximum maintain temperature and also exposure temperature is the same. The next step up would be the XTV cable which has a temperature of 250 degrees Fahrenheit for your maximum maintain temperature but it can be exposed to a maximum, maximum exposure temperature of over 482 degrees Fahrenheit. And then finally we have your KTV which can go up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for a maximum maintained temperature and also it can be exposed to over 482 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's look at the disadvantages of self-regulating heat trace. The first disadvantage of self-regulating heat trace would be the fact that it only goes up to 277 volt. The reason why we mention and we call this a disadvantage is because compared to the MI cable which you can use 480 volt the MI cable will get a slightly longer circuit. However, at 277 volt, you're still getting a very long circuit. The next disadvantage would be the high inrush current. When you energize self-regulating heat trace, you have a very high inrush current. That means that when you're designing the system, you must account for that high inrush current when you're figuring out what size breaker you're gonna need to use. We need to size the breaker at the inrush current and not the operating current. And those are the disadvantages of self-regulating heat trace. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please join us for the next video where we'll talk about heat trace components. This is Deshaun again here. And remember to always be safe.